Let's hop back to the live equipment now, take a look at these options and exactly what they mean. Let me line that back up. Now with switch port mode, we've got switch port mode access and switch port mode trunk and you'll notice that both of those say unconditionally at the end of their descriptions. iOS help is usually pretty helpful but in these modes it's pretty much just telling you what you already know. You know obviously switch port mode access sets the trunking mode to access unconditionally, duh, but what exactly does that mean? Well with access we know now it the port will belong to one VLAN and one VLAN only. If you set it to trunk unconditionally then obviously it's going to trunk unconditionally and be a member of all VLANs by default. But the word unconditionally, we don't see that very often in iOS help. So we must have something else going on with these other modes. And you'll notice the keyword here in the middle of the dynamic definition is negotiate. So we're negotiating the trunking mode. Let's see if we have any other options here. And we do, auto and desirable. And again, you see iOS help just pretty much telling us what we can already see with our own eyes here, that we have a dynamic auto version and a dynamic desirable version. I want to mention this more for people who are studying for the previous exams, the previous versions of the CSENT CCNA. Um, the switches that we used to really concentrate on was the 2950. That ran in de uh, dynamic desirable mode by default. The 2960s and the newer Cisco switches, they run in dynamic auto. So that's one difference between the two you should know. I don't, I don't want to get you thinking they're going to ask you a bunch of incredibly detailed version specific questions because they're not. That's not what the CSENT and CCNA is about. I'm mentioning this one because it is a change from the previous exam. So if I were just asked the generic question, what mode does a Cisco switch port run in by default as far as trunking goes? I would go with dynamic auto because that is what the new switches run in and it's also what 2960 switches run in as well. So let's go ahead and talk about what the difference is because you know we got auto and we got desirable and you know we got trunk and access. Let's, let's put all these together and talk about them all at one time. Now what I wanted to show you here, we've got dynamic auto and desirable. I mentioned that there is one more that I wanted to show you but it's not a switch port mode command. It's switch port no negotiate. And again, the definition of switch port no negotiate being device will not engage in negotiation protocol, again, is pretty much telling us what we already know. So we need to know exactly what's going on there. And let's take a look at that off, excuse me, on here at the top. On means that the switch port is unconditionally trunking whether the other end of the trunk likes it or not. The other end of the trunk doesn't have anything to do with it. And that's why you saw this particular output. I want to sh run show interface trunk again. And here's port 8 and notice the mode is on. And the reason that you're seeing that is that I put the switch port mode trunk command on there previously. I did that off camera before we started this lab. So switch port mode trunk is going to make on appear there and it just means that hey I'm trunking whether anybody else likes it or not there's no negotiation involved. Now off means that the port will not trunk with the remote partner under any circumstances and I'm sure you noticed when we were going through those options that there was no off option. Uh, there really wasn't an on option really you know you put trunk you didn't type on. Well off it that just means that you made the port the access port. And that just says, forget it, you know, we're not going to trunk, period. Desirable means that the port is going to actively attempt to trunk. If the remote port is in on, desirable, or auto mode, a trunk is going to result. That's a good detail to know. So again, desirable just means the port is going to actively attempt to trunk. So if the remote port on the other end of the trunk is in on, desirable, or auto mode, you're going to get a trunk. Now auto, auto is kind of a wallflower because auto means the port will trunk but the other side's got to initiate it. If the remote port is in desirable or on mode, a trunk will result. If both sides are in auto trunking mode, you don't get a trunk. So where with switches where we had dynamic desirable as the default and you plugged in your crossover cable, bang, you know, you had a trunk a few seconds later because both ports on the trunk were attempting to trunk. 
but with Dynamic Auto, you plug it in, it's going to sit there because Dynamic Auto on one end, Dynamic Auto on the other, it means each partner is waiting for the other one to say, hey, let's dance. And instead, since no one's initiating it, then they just lean against the wall and nobody dances with them. No negotiate. That's going a little further because the local port, the port you put that on, goes into permanent trunking mode, but dynamic trunking protocol, DTP frames, are not sent across the trunk. It cuts back on a little bit of overhead. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the de de detail we go into with D DTP in this course. We can really get into the overhead issue. It cuts down a little bit on your overhead. That's, that's really the, uh, the good thing about it. And really, that is about it for trunking because we do go into how they exchange VLAN information uh, in the CCNA course. I'm dying to give you that now, but we've got enough switching information going on here. Uh, I do want to show you one particular command here. Let's go ahead and bring the equipment back up. Let's go back to show interface trunk. You'll notice this odd line about VLANs allowed on trunk. Well, by default, of course, they're all allowed, but you may have specialized situations where you want to filter that out a little bit. And in, actually, in the very next video, we're going to spend just a few minutes looking at the options for that. Yeah, again, it's not something we do on an everyday basis, but I think it's a good skill for you to have for this exam. So we've got one more video there, and I'll see you there.